Later today, President Biden will head to that battleground state of Michigan, where he'll keep making the point that he's up for the job of beating Donald Trump in November. The question remains, is it too late? Arlette Signs is in Detroit. And Arlene, Arlette, tell us uh, a little bit more about what we expect later today and, uh, and anything else we know about this, uh, this meeting that happened between Jeffries and the president and the fact that the Democratic leader did not endorse the president. Well, Manu, President Biden has said that he will just keep moving in this campaign, despite the pressure within his own party from some for the president to step aside in this moment. Now, the president's advisors are well aware of the concerns within some parts of the Democratic Party. A top advisor to Biden, Steve Reschetti, told lawmakers just yesterday that he promised he would relay the concerns, relay the insight and input that they were receiving uh, from a meeting uh, with the president directly. But for President Biden's part, he he is really trying to push forward with his campaign. The campaign uh, scheduling a several travel uh, stops uh, over the course of the past uh, of the next week. That includes spending time here in Michigan, then Texas on Monday, Nevada on uh, Tuesday and Wednesday, all as he's trying to show voters that he is up for a second term in office. The president, I'm told, here in Michigan plans to really try to draw a contrast with former President Donald Trump when it pertains to policy. Hey guys, my name is Devori Darkins. Welcome back to my channel, Mindset Politics. And in today's video, we're going to be discussing another Democrat who has come out and voiced their concern over the president and wanting them wanting him to drop out. Also, uh, some of the fallout from his press conference at the NATO summit and how people are still sticking with him, which is obvious. But the concern continues to grow. And why this really matters is because as the days go on, and this is the story, what people are not talking about is what Trump is doing, what Trump said, what what Trump is going to do. And the, the news cycle and Democrats and the left, they're trying to push the whole narrative back towards Trump. So is the president. But they're not really finding much success. And uh, before I go any further, we'll play the video and uh, talk about it a little bit. Now, you know what to do like share and subscribe now let's play the video you know that's that's precisely the problem right this is not about one press conference one debate um you know one speech this this is about the presidency of the united states it's about an apocalyptically powerful individual and whether the trajectory to the election and the outcome of the election um, and beyond, in the event that Joe Biden were reelected, into a job that requires you to deal with the most hideous stuff on the planet. The president doesn't get to answer any easy questions. I mean, a debate with Donald Trump is a walk in the park compared to what happens at 4 a.m. in the White House. Yeah, that right there is the point of the entire matter, right? So if you can't even handle a debate with Donald Trump, how do we know you can handle these tough negotiations with people like Putin or North Korea or China or Iran or even the whole thing in Israel? How do we know you are effective at communicating and negotiating if you're not effective at debating uh, here in America on the debate stage and a debate that is on your terms? You asked for the, the debate to be the way that it was and it still didn't work. So this has nothing to do with one particular debate. I, I didn't put out my statement because I, you know, there's an old there's an old uh, tradition that you know politics and partisanship stops at the water edge, water's edge, and I wasn't going to do that with uh, with the important NATO things happening. Um, but but that, I mean that was the that was the timing. Yeah, that, that's Warren Buffett has a nice little quote: "Praise in public, criticize in private," and obviously. Uh, that's what most of them are doing, uh, but he's one of those 15 that were like, you know what, it's, we need to apply some pressure here, right? And we're going to see where this goes. This is going to be an interesting story over the next four months leading up to the actual election. But as of now, I mean, image is everything. Results tell the story. And I mean, if you're at 15, I, I just wonder if someone's betting right now, like how many people are publicly going to come out? Like, what would that number be? Would it be 20? Is it going to stop at 20? Will, will we get up to 50? You know, will there be some type of 
you know, collective press conference calling out the president to just resign the, you know, his office. I mean, <laughs> it could get pretty crazy here if uh, Joe Biden doesn't get ahead of this. Well, you heard him get a question from David Sanger about the ability to deal with President Putin, President Xi, and he said, I can deal with them now and I'll be able to deal with them three years from now. Do you not uh, agree with that? Look, it, it, it's excruciatingly hard to answer that question, right? Because, um, you know, a huge part of politics is loyalty and love and emotion. And nobody understands that better or attracts that better than Joe Biden, you know, a storytelling Irishman, you know, who lives in an emotional world. And, you know, those are critical values for politics. That's why, you know, rallies. Are yeah, but you know what is the probably top value of politics is your ability to communicate effectively, right? And to negotiate and debate. Like, if you can't even do that, I don't care how loving and empathetic and storytelling you are. I mean, listen, this is like sports, right? No one wants to watch the Super Bowl and then one of the teams, they get blown out in the first quarter 40 to zero. Like, no one wants that. We want a competition. We want it to be competitive, right? We want both teams to show up and give us their best. And that debate did not, that didn't happen that way, you know, so. There's actually another clip we're going to pull here really quickly here and um, get this other reaction to Joe Biden's performance. And before I play that clip, it's going to be Stephen A. and Patrick Bet David. So PBD, he goes on to Stephen A. Smith's show. Uh, Stephen A. Smith really right had his name in the sports arena, right? He's that guy on sports commentating. Uh, but anyways, this whole statement from Patrick Bet David, I really think he clearly articulates what the true problem is uh, with Joe Biden and the Democrats. Let's go ahead and play that. Since that debate has taken place, well, I mean, this is probably the most, uh, uh, if, if we were to talk about a, you know, person who is the face of a league, okay, in sports, you're a sports guy, if you were to say, what is the worst performance the MVP or the face of the league has had in a finals game, in a fight where you're so disappointed? Who would you say, right? And it, no matter who you ask, left, right, or center, everybody will tell you this is the worst performance we've ever seen in the history of any presidential debate. Doesn't matter who you put up there. Reagan, no one's Reagan versus Reagan versus Jimmy Carter. No, no, no. This oh, is ha Barack Obama versus Mitt Romney, the first I, go round. Well, uh, Romney got it the second go round, and then Romney on the third go round. I was on a flight one time with Bill O'Reilly uh, from Burbank to Vegas, and this was an event he was doing back then, I think, with Dennis Miller. Just like, I don't know, whatever the time is when Romney and Obama are going back and forth. And I said, hey, what the hell happened? Romney had the lead in second debate. Third debate, he got all soft. He says, because Romney got feedback from his marketing team that single women voters don't like the way that you were hard on the Obama on Benghazi. He took that counsel and he lost. He could have beaten Obama, but he didn't go strong on the third one. No, there's never been anything worse than what we saw here. We've never seen anybody choke, not being able to deliver a single message, allowing Trump to have that one hit to say, honestly, I'm not going to lie to you. I don't know what he just said. And I don't think he even knows what he said. Mm. So now the real thing is going to be how quickly the DNC is going to be able to replace. If so, if not, there's many moving parts, but uh, we're living in uncharted territories right now. We're going to. Yeah. Like I said, <clears throat> he lays it out very clearly. And that is the problem here is the amount of Democrats coming out and voicing their opposition to President Biden running again. That's one. Number two, you just cannot ignore the debate performance because the debate performance is like. Besides the election happening on right on November 4th, I mean, what's the next biggest day leading up to an election? It's the debates. Right. And so the debates is equivalent to a playoff game. And if you show up to the playoff game and you choke, nobody's going to forget that. Not right now. Now, maybe two years from now, maybe. But in this world that we find ourselves in politics where everything is recorded, everything is looked at, everything is analyzed nobody's forgetting that and that's the first time most people got to see Biden on a stage effectively or attempting to 
communicate his ideas and just really failing to do so. I mean, it's just so crazy, right? We're just really in uncharted territories, like he said. But let's go ahead and play this original clip we were playing earlier and uh, finish this up. Congressman, you said that you you waited to put your statement out until after because of it was the NATO summit here in Washington. You believed you wanted to wait until the, he was done meeting with world leaders, done with all of that. Do you expect that there are other Democrats in the House, more that are going to come out? And if so, how many more do you think will there will be? You know, I don't know the answer to that question. What I can tell you is that I circulate amongst my colleagues. Um, and, you know, I would tell you that there is a very small percentage of my colleagues who are ride or die, um, who say this is the only way to go. My colleagues and I are worried about two things. One, what is plan B? That's a totally fair question. I actually think plan B looks pretty good. I don't know what it looks like, but Come I think we have a remarkable bench of Democrats uh, and they're also worried about something very legitimate, which tortured me and continues to torture me, which is we cannot be here anymore. This needs to be resolved, I don't know, in the next five to seven days, because we just went 10 days where the story was not Donald Trump promising totalitarianism. It was how is Joe Biden going to do in the big boy press conference? Um, wherever you are on this stuff. This needs to stop soon. And look, if Joe Biden, you know, at the end of the day, he's our candidate, no one will work harder than I will to elect him. But this is the moment, and in the next 96 hours, perhaps, is the moment to set aside the poetry, the loyalty, and the love, and ask yourself a hard question, mm -hmm. which is, are you sure he's going to win? And are you sure that we don't have people who might articulate the incredible backward-looking successes? Now, remember that, and I say backward-looking because politics is about the future. The president yeah. focused today on his record behind us. Important. But politics is always about the future. Ask yourself that question. Are you sure? Because you're not just gambling your own political reputation. You are gambling the future of the United States of America. So where was this at two years ago? I mean... This is the the arrogance, I think, of these Democrats. Where were you guys at two, three years ago? You can't tell me you didn't notice this or had some type of concerns, even an inkling like, hmm, he doesn't seem very well, right? And you guys are only coming out and you're only saying what you're saying and you're only saying, oh, yeah, we should t you know, face this tough question of should he stay in the race? And it's like, why don't you guys have that conversation even a year ago at a minimum? I just I just find it funny. It, it's the irony. It, Congressman Jim Himes, I'll just say you are on CNN pretty frequently. You are here to weigh in on foreign policy issues, intel issues. I, I've rarely seen you this fired up as you are talking mm -hmm. about this issue tonight and your call on the president to step aside. Uh, Jim Himes, thank you for joining us to, to explain your reasoning. Yeah, thank you for that, right? So hopefully the rest of them will be honest and come out and just say what it is. I think America still respects when we just shoot it straight, right? Just shoot it straight. Just come out, get it over with, rip off the Band-Aid, get them out of there, and keep it moving. Now, some people will say, well, that's going to be chaotic, and and he's not going to go down without a fight. And, and, well, you know, at the end of the day, if you guys are still – going to believe that Donald Trump is the biggest threat to democracy, then I would think you would go down fighting, right, to put someone in place that's going to have a better chance than Joe Biden. Because one thing's for sure, whoever they replace him with, if they will, doesn't have this type of attention on them, right? Everyone, 50, over 50 million, right, on TV, we don't even know what the streaming numbers are, Right. But over 50 million, let's just say because streaming is ridiculous. Right. So let's just call it 100 million. At least 100 million people have seen Joe Biden's performance on the debate stage, and they are not going to forget that. So. Are they going to lose even more by going with somebody else? I don't think so. I think their biggest the, the, the fastest path to them losing is keeping Joe Biden on the ticket, and that is my mindset. But what about your mindset? What do you think about this increasing number of Democrats wanting to get Joe Biden off, off of the ticket? Uh, what do you think about Joe Biden's defiance, saying he's going to stay in the race? 
You know, what do you think about all of this? Let me know your thoughts and more in the comment section below. Thank you for checking out this video today and we'll see you in the next one.